In the world of gaming, few games have left a mark as profound as Tetris. Born in the heart of the Soviet Union, Tetris is the brainchild of Alexei Pahitnov, a software engineer who found inspiration in his childhood games and the Electronica 60 computer. Pajitnov's genius shone bright in the summer of 1984 when he pieced together the puzzle of falling blocks that we now know as Tetris. Thus, in the summer of 1984, Tetris was born, ready to embark on a journey that would change the world. The journey of Tetris was not without its share of intrigue and drama. Enter Robert Stein, a British software businessman who spotted the potential of Tetris and aimed to bring it across the Iron Curtain. However, securing the licensing rights proved to be a Herculean task. Stein faced a labyrinth of bureaucracy, an unfamiliar business landscape and the looming shadow of the Cold War. Negotiations were fraught with tension as East and West jostled for control over this captivating game. Yet Stein's perseverance began to pay off. He navigated the intricate web of Soviet red tape and gradually Tetris began its journey westward. This was no ordinary game transfer, it was a symbol of cultural exchange, a beacon of creativity piercing the Iron Curtain. Against all odds, Tetris was on its way to the West, ready to revolutionize the gaming industry. The year 1988 marked the beginning of a new era for Tetris. This was when the block-dropping sensation was finally launched in the Western world. However, it wasn't a simple journey. There was a showdown with the Electronorg Technica, also known as Elorg, the organization that held the rights to Tetris. It all came down to an unexpected meeting in Moscow, a tense negotiation that ultimately secured the rights for the game. With the rights secured, Tetris was set to conquer home computers and consoles around the world. The journey of Tetris was not over yet, it was just getting started. Enter Hank Rogers, a daring entrepreneur with a knack for seeing potential where others didn't. He recognized the allure of Tetris and was determined to bring it to Japan. But he knew, to truly make it shine, he had to secure it for a platform that was rapidly gaining popularity. The Nintendo NES and Game Boy. Rogers was not one to be deterred by the complexities of international licensing, nor the intimidating prospect of dealing with Soviet authorities. He embarked on an audacious journey, straight to the heart of Moscow. The stakes were high, the negotiations tough, but Rogers was tougher. His persistence paid off, and in a landmark deal, he secured the rights to Tetris for Nintendo. With Tetris now on Nintendo, the game was set to take the world by storm. However, the journey of Tetris had its share of dramatic twists and turns. Atari Games, gallantly leaping ahead, released a North American NES version, but without the proper rights. This audacious move led to a cascade of lawsuits, cease and desist letters flying left and right, causing ripples in the gaming world. A judge's ruling the final play added to the drama. Despite these challenges, Tetris stood strong, ready to face what lay ahead. Despite its global success, Tetris faced one final hurdle. Its creator, Alexei Payetnov, found himself in a royalty conundrum, receiving no payment for his game-changing invention. Yet, as the mid-90s rolled around, the pieces finally fell into place. The Tetris company emerged, restoring rightful ownership and ensuring Payetnov received his due. This decisive move secured the legacy of Tetris, allowing it to flourish and evolve. Today, Tetris continues to captivate audiences worldwide, a testament to its enduring appeal.